Hi, I'm Will Adams, and this is Honeybrook Tools and Woodworks. This is the fifth in a series of videos that I'm doing uh, where I bring you into the shop to give you a little peek at how I make my traditional woodworking hand tools in my shop here in Vermont. Uh, th thus far, I have done videos on winding sticks, uh, marking knives, dovetail knives, and the birdcage awl. And this video will show you... Um, how I make my specialty screwdrivers. I make three different screwdrivers, actually four, uh, three different types, but four. I'll explain that in a minute. So this is a, a chip breaker screwdriver, uh, which is custom made for me by a blacksmith up in Hardwick, Vermont. His name is Lucian Avery, very talented guy. This is purpose fit for uh, chip breakers um, on Stanley, Record, and I, I believe it fits Lee Nielsen um, hand planes as well. This little screwdriver, I originally made it as um, and, and sell it as a frog screw screwdriver, and it's to tighten and loosen uh, the screws that hold the frog into the sole of a hand plane. I have found that it is just an incredibly handy little screwdriver to have in your apron pocket. Um, and these are these are the first two that I made. These are prototypes. I've, I've changed the shape of the handle since then. Uh, these are an apple, one of my very favorite wo woods to, to turn. Um, and then I make two different size split nut screwdrivers. And these are for adjusting the split nuts on hand saws. Um, just yesterday for my birthday, my, my wife gave me this, um, this hand saw uh, from Florip Toolworks, um, Eric Florip. And this, uh, the larger of the two split nut screwdrivers that I make fits these perfectly. And it also fits the split nuts uh, made uh, or used by Charlie Ernest, who is a sawmaker down in Rhode Island. His uh, business name is Spring Green Saws. If you don't know about him, you need to, because he makes some absolutely phenomenal saws. Um, in any case, uh, these are uh, purpose fit for these two, um, and, and probably more modern makers use these large um, split nuts. Uh, and I make a smaller one that uh, fits Lee Nielsen hand saws. Now, it's not often that you need to mess with these screws, except for maybe when um, there's seasonal adjustments and the and um, changes in temperature and humidity, and the and the the handle might get a little bit loose. And you can't just use any screwdriver for that. You really need a a screwdriver that's purpose made for these screws. Otherwise, if, if you try to wing it, um, you're likely to damage the, the split nuts. So today, um, I'm gonna set this aside for a second. Today, I've got this beautiful piece of um, figured walnut that I'm going to use for a split nut driver. And um, I always think about grain orientation uh, for my handles. Um, if you saw my video on winding sticks, um, I talked a lot about it there. This is pretty evenly figured throughout it. It's just some denatured alcohol to just kind of bring out the, the figure. But it's pretty evenly figured throughout. Um, although I saw, I did see one part that I thought I wanted to be on the end. Yeah, I think it's this end right down here is a little bit more figured than, uh, just the way it's figured, I think it's gonna, it'll look nice towards the end of the handle. Um, so I'm gonna chuck this up. Uh, we're gonna start by drilling the hole to receive the, uh, the, the blade, and then we're gonna turn the handle. I'll be right back.
Okay. So there we go. Got a little bit more of a nub on the end than I usually get, but that last bit that you saw where I was about to part it off and then I came back in with the skew, when I tried to part it off, um, this, this bevel um, rubbed against the handle in a way that um, it, it just kind of marred it up. So I came in, you saw me, I, I came in and I, I corrected the whole end of the, of the handle. So now there are no steps, no, um, no things that you would feel when it's in your hand. So next step is to head back over to the bench. We're going to install the blade, uh, install the decorative piece, polish that up, and then we'll be ready to go. Head back to the bench. Okay, so we're back at the bench, and this is just very lightly um, held in the in the vise. I don't want to I don't want to uh, crush the wood or damage it in any way. So it's not really it's not held in there very tightly. Uh, more just to give me a, a platform to work from. So I'm just going to come in here with the um, this file and deal with that little nubbins that is left from the, the parting. And then I can come in here and eyeball that center. And then the drill. Good. And then this is um, just one eighth brass brass rod. Come in here and clip off a little piece. And there's a lot going on here on the bench. I'm going to need that. Um, and I need CA glue. Come up out of the bench. And this is super thin CA glue. Apparently the tip is clogged. Yeah, that's not, that's not gonna work. There we go. Seems to be wanting to come out on its own. All right, so just a little bit of that and get that started. And drive it home. All right, I'm gonna let that set for a second. And so before I put the blade in, um, I take it over to the bench grinder and I just, uh, I grind a couple little grooves in it just to give the epoxy a little bit of something to hold on to when um, when the handle's driven on. So, let me grab my epoxy. And, let's see.
And then we'll just use, use the blade, the end of the blade to mix it. Hammer that. Let's see. Yeah, that's good. Wipe that excess off. That'll, that'll set in about five minutes. Um, and while it's doing that, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, file this down, hit it with some abrasive paper, touch up the end with sh some shellac, and then this will be ready to go. So let's get to that. So with a little detail like this, it's important, I think, uh, not only to look at it to see how it looks, but as this is a tool that's going to be in somebody's hands, um, you want to feel it. And you just want to feel to make sure that uh, that end feels natural, that, um, that it's curving over the way you want it to. just a finer file. Okay, need to hit that with uh, a little bit of abrasive paper. This is 600 grit abrasive paper. So there are two, two things, I guess three things, that I'm looking for as I do this. You don't want to feel any discrepancy, for lack of a better term, um, between the wood and the brass. That needs to be just a really smooth transition. And looking to get rid of any file marks. And the brass in particular, I want to make sure is free of any kind of file marks. So now I'll hit it with some Scotch Brite. Yeah, that's good. And then finally, four out steel wool. There you go. 
So no scratches, no file marks. Now all I need to do is hit it with some shellac. And I'll have to do this a couple of times. Um, the nice thing about applying the shellac on, on the lathe is it goes on quickly and it dries quickly. Um, it's a little, little trickier doing this particular shape by hand. So this is just um, a pad that is saturated with shellac inside this cotton rag. And um, I can feel that it's starting to, starting to dry up a little bit. Um, so this is just um, some oil. Uh, I think it's paraffin oil. But that just serves as a, as a lubricant. And that's still, yeah, let's see, whoops. Denatured alcohol. There we go. Like I said, this will get a couple of coat, coats like this. And then it'll get some hard wax. Um, I'll stamp my maker's mark in it, on it. And then it'll be good to go. Now, ooh, I just felt that the, the, the pad got a little bit too dry and it dragged across the shellac. So I'm going to go back in there. I can see it too. So you, what I, I sprayed some denatured alcohol onto the pad and that, um, that will help to soften the shellac that's on it and, and serve to blend it. Okay, so I'm going to let that sit overnight, and then this will be ready to go. So when this is finished, um, pardon the pun, um, I will shoot a, a still photograph of this to post at the end of the video. So as always, if you like this video, please click like, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. And if you got other friends that might like this, please tell them about it. Thanks for watching.